So I take a minute in this video to show some of the um, pieces, parts of, of the PLC. And what we have here is the control logics from Alan Bradley. Um, Rockwell Automation is the manufacturer and it's, it's so it's known as Alan Bradley or Rockwell Automation. So you can hear it referred to as both. And the control logics is also the systems that we have in the lab. And that's what we're going to get to um, at least in the second part of the class as we um, probably get past the midterm. But this is a nice uh, representation of what a typical PLC system looks like. Um, so first, uh, we should say that there are kind of two types of PLCs um, as a simple way to kind of categorize. One is uh, chassis based and one would be kind of a um, kind of a shall we say a brick PLC. So the brick PLC would be kind of like a kind of like an all in one device, uh, which is what the Siemens product, the Siemens S7 1200 that we'll have in the lab as well is, is more of a brick type, uh, whereas the control logics is a chassis type. And what I mean by that is if I were to remove um, this card from the chassis, you'll see that there is actually a slot that this goes into. So that's why it's called a chassis. So typically uh, these chassis PLCs will, will have um, a fixed number of chassis of, or slots, of course. So this, this one is a seven slot, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slot chassis. So I can put seven modules like this into the, um, into the chassis. They do make bigger chassis and they make smaller chassis too. And each manufacturer, of course, is, uh, is a little bit different in the sizes that they make. So Alan Bradley makes a four slot, seven slot, 10, 13, and even a 17 slot chassis. So that's a pretty, pretty wide chassis. Um, so we talked about some of the main components of a PLC. So uh, the first component is the CPU, which we said was kind of the, the most important part or the brain. So this is the CPU right here. Um, and we can kind of tell that from a few things. We have a key switch here. So the key switch will actually be, um, you know, one form of security on the plant floor that we can put the key switch into uh, run mode or we can key it over into what they call program mode. And that would actually lock people out from making any changes to it, depending on where you put that key switch at. Um, also, if we move this little thing here, you'll see that we, we have a, a USB port right there as well. So we can actually plug a USB cable into that CPU and um, connect to it with our laptop. If I were to pull the CPU out, you'll see that it's basically just a um, circuit board that is inside of a plastic housing. So this plastic housing is nothing more than to kind of act as a, you know, protection from people like me from touching the circuit board, right? And zapping the chips. So it just kind of gives it a little bit of a, uh, a housing or enclosure, but you can see it's very open and that's mainly because of airflow. You can also see in the chassis that there are um, vents, uh, air vents above and you can't see, but they're also below. And uh, that helps with the airflow of uh, through the, the product, keep it cool. Uh, you know, computers run hot, it's, uh, chips run hot. So there's no fan on these on this processor. Um, so it, re it, re it, it relies on um, air, just kind of natural airflow through the panel, uh, like a convection of air across to help it keep, keep cool. Um, I am in an office, so it's also a very air condition, you know, we're in, I'm in an air conditioned environment, so it's not a hot environment here. But if I were like on a plant floor where it could be very hot or an enclosure that could actually be outside, you know, getting direct sunlight on it, that, that panel is going to get very, very hot and, uh, and having air to, uh, you know, it's very important to have that, that air convection flow to keep this thing cool. If it were to overheat, then it would actually shut down on a, on an error. Uh, it would actually detect an over temperature. Um, the other kind of the major component would be the power supply. And in the control logics family, the power supply sits here on the um, far uh, 
left-hand side of the chassis. So the power supply has to go here. Uh, it should be noted for the control objects family, these cards can be placed in any particular slot. So the CPU can sit in any slot in this chassis. These IO cards and e this ethernet card can sit in any slot in the chassis. So it doesn't, doesn't have to be CPU first and then a uh, particular order. So we just have a door here, but behind the door uh, is where we'll make our power supply connections. So this power supply is an AC power supply. So that means we have a 120 volt AC connection here. And then I have a, a, an on off switch that if I were to toggle that off, then my whole uh, system just got shut down based on that. So we like to kind of keep that switch hidden and behind the door because we don't want to see anybody accidentally toggle that switch off. You can maybe see that there's a green light right there and that is indicating that the, 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 the system has got power. Uh, may not show in the video right now, but uh, there is a green light right there. As you notice, as the uh, system comes back up, we uh, it's going through a, a startup test and you can start to see that these lights will change status. Um, anytime you're on a PLC, there's usually an okay light. Um, on that system. It doesn't really matter what brand it is. It's usually, it's pretty universal, some kind of okay light. And it's pretty much universal that green and solid means good. Um, anytime you see something flashing or if it's red, uh, then that would mean that there could be a sign of a problem. Red typically means problem. Uh, green typically means uh, it's okay. So the rest of the chassis is simply IO cards and a communication card. So we talked about the other major components of a PLC being the IO and a communications uh, modules as well. So um, this, uh, each one of these cards is a different type of, of IO. So this one is a DC input. So that's 24 volt DC. That's our kind of standard industrial uh, DC voltage level. So it's an input card. This is an output card, DC output. So that's a discrete output, 24 volt. Then we have an analog output next, and we have an analog input. And then the last card in this chassis is an ethernet card. And we know that because it says ethernet IP. Uh, there's also an ethernet port right here, which I could plug a, a cat5 cable into um, also on the on the scroll on the screen we get an ip address so that would also be a kind of a an indication that this is an ethernet card if for some reason we couldn't uh, see that that uh, ethernet ip there anymore so each of these guys are just have little doors right so there is so what happens here is uh we have wiring from devices in the field such as push buttons or we have a uh a potentiometer kind of kind of acting as a uh, an analog input and we have these meters acting as analog outputs and uh, each one of these push buttons is also a light so if um, if i had the program in here if i push that button that could also turn on a light as an output so basically each one of these to these push buttons are discrete inputs right they're either on or off right i push it it's on i take my finger off it it's off. So those are wired to the inputs, right? So the input switches or push buttons are wired to the input card. Then the lights that are in each of these push buttons is wired from the output card. So the output card is wired to the light, right? A light is either on or off. So it's discrete. There's no, it's not a dimming light. It's just either on or off. And then for the analog input, we have our potentiometers wired up. So we typically have two types of um, signals, analog signals used in the field. Four to 20 milliamp is typically the most common, but there's also zero to 10 volt. So you can either have a current input or a voltage input. For this demo case, and for the demo case that's also in the lab, we use voltage. And that's mainly because it's easier to take the, the voltage from the, uh, from the, from the system and run it through a potentiometer and wire that to the analog input card versus trying to uh, create a, a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And then we also have an output, analog output, 
So we have a, a zero to 10 volt signal that is wired from this output card to each of these meters. So I have, you know, my first analog output and my second analog output. Um, as you can see, each of these little doors can close and hide the wiring behind there. And then again, our, our ethernet card. And then we have one open slot available to us here on the end to add another card if we needed to um, for future. All right, so uh, that's just the basics of what the PLC uh, system looks like. Again, this is exactly what we'll have in the lab for the control logic system. So, uh, so you will get that opportunity to actually work with this very similar looking system to this um, with very similar push buttons and uh, knobs just like we have here when we get to the control logics section.